of some 200 families who all lived, worked the land, laughed, played, and mourned for their neighbors when they passed on. This time I speak of is not in the far distant past. No, this community's life as they knew it only ceased to exist about 80 years ago. In order to facilitate providing the wider Dublin area with enough water and electricity, the government at the time decided that the best course of action was to create a reservoir. Unfortunately for the people of the Liffey Valley, their homes and their community were the chosen spot. Near the village of Valnahoun, a group of men discussed the plans to flood their valley. This is the garden, ye boys. Have the old piece of weather we're having, didn't it? Uh, I met Hal Eagles on the way down. He gave me a bundle of letters. He gave me one for you, Johnny. He said it was coming this way. Fierce official looking there. Help son of an all. I shall sure let you open yours and read it. It'll take me all day. Oh, hold on a minute, so we'll have a look at it and see what's in it. Oh, would you hurry up? Now, will you take your time? I, I get my blessings and all yet. Will you wait a minute? Be given up to me. Ah! Stairs start. Stairs start. Air no less. Huh? Akara. I'm writing to you on behalf of the Minister for Industry and Commerce, Mr. Sean McEntee, in relation to plans put in place by the government to build a dam at Paulofuca on the River Liffey to create a reservoir to supply water to the Dublin city area. A turbine will also be installed at the dam to generate electricity. A dam? A turbine? What are you talking about? Uh, well, you what's a turbine anyhow? What's it got to do with us? Will you wait a minute? How do I know what the turbine is? Wait till I finish the letter, we might know it. For God's sake, man, have patience. This is for the greater good of all. It is estimated that in all, between 5,000 and 6,000 acres of land will be flooded. Compensation will be paid at the rate of £10 an acre in line with the current value of land in the district. Representatives of the government will be calling to the households and farms involved re in the near future. It is expected that work will soon commence and be completed by the spring of 1940. Mr John A. Costello has been appointed by the government to oversee the project and bring it to a successful conclusion. Michel Amass, James O'Brien. Oh, they're, go they're going to take our land. You could say take our land because ten pound an acre is robbery and move us out of our homes. And all for what? For some old bloody government minister above in Dublin can wash his face in our water. It's all a load of bloody nonsense. I know it is a load of There's no way they'll flood the valley. Where, sure, this is my home. Where would I go? And ten pound an acre is an insult to us as well. I suppose we'll be all getting letters at Christmas telling us to go. Well, what am I supposed to do? I can't just up sticks. Uh, and the money they're offering won't pay off anyone's loans. That's right. And, and I can't just mm -hmm. take my family and go like that. That's right. I, for one, am not going anywhere. What are they going to do about that, eh? Well, they can out. That's what they can do about it. Don't be daft. There's no way to do that. That'd be mad. We just have to wait and see and hope this madness comes to an end. For the love of God, what have we done to deserve this? You did nothing to deserve this. Nothing. Here's a paltry ten pound an acre. Now, take it and get the hell out of our way. We don't want you. Go on. Go away. All right, Jimmy. Calm down. Uh, calm down. We're all still me. here. Take it I'm easy, man. I'm going to wait on to the quiz. It's the hell with it. Good luck, Jimmy. Good luck, Jimmy. The people of Ballinahoun and its surrounds found it difficult to believe that the valley they'd grown up in and the land they worked all their lives was actually going to be flooded, that their homes were going to be at the bottom of a lake. This is understandable, as such a huge event was going to happen and it would com be completely devastating to their community and to their way of life.
Here, what the bloody hell is going on here? They, we're opening up all the graves here, one by one, and the remains are being put into coffins and brought to a little cemetery outside Blessington. Borgish Cemetery, I think they call it. I heard hell it is going to happen, but I didn't think it had ever come to pass. But you, you can't go go dig up a whole graveyard. Well, whether you like it or not, it's happening. I'm sorry. Why are you family buried here? This is madness. Well, this is what's going to happen. And it's sad for the people, the relatives, they'll have to walk a long distance now to visit their family buried in Borgi Cemetery. But tell me, how high do you think the water will rise? I mean, this is up high enough, isn't it? It probably is, but in places, it's going to rise to 20, 30 feet, you know? And they're afraid that the water course might be contaminated. Have you disturbed the far end of the graveyard yet? No, hi. Are your family buried there? I want to visit them. No I sure think we could I sure think we could do with a break anyway. We'll be here for a good while yet. Here, throw this up here. Come on, we get up at here. <laughs> Well, Mary, I don't know what to say. They're going to move you out of your grave, and, and if they don't, I might not get buried alongside you. In a way, you're lucky you didn't live to see this day, because everything we know and love is going to be buried underwater, even Ballin' a Hound. Oh, I can't make sense of it all. And now they're disturbing you in your sleep. Oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. Bodies of those in the local graveyard were dug up and removed to a cemetery near the village of Blessington. This would have caused further upset to the people of the valley, as no one expects to see their loved ones exhumed from their resting place and removed to another site. It is even speculated that this may not have been necessary, as the floodwaters were not expected to reach the actual graveyard. It is thought that this might have been done due to fears of contamination of the water supply. What the hell was that? I was still getting ready to blow a few more. Why? I don't know why. Lads, they're after blowing up Valley Mount Bridge. The guy from Red Lake to flood us for sure. Ha <laughs> ha, they'll not flood us if we don't move. Talk sense, man. They're not doing that for nothing. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, what are you lot up to? What's all that noise about? Sure, we were blowing up the bridge. Why? In preparation for the flooding of the valley, shouldn't you lads be moving on? I'm not moving anywhere. This is my home, God damn you. Well, you'll have to, because once we start flooding this valley, this whole area is going to be underwater. So you should take this as an opportunity to start over. You have paid well enough for your land. Use that to buy something new. The only thing that's going to be living around here is the fish. With the money we've got, what are we supposed to look for? Well, I'm sorry. 
All I can say is this whole place is going to be unlivable soon. Sounds like they've been ripped off with the land prices. What will happen to them? I don't know. One thing is for sure though. Their way of living around here is forgotten forever. Don't you feel sorry for them? I do, I do. But that's the price of progress. I only wish the government was a bit more fair with them. What if they would choose not to move? Oh, they'll move. They'll have to. The army were brought in to blow up the bridges in the valley. Also, the roofs were taken off the houses, and many of the homesteads were razed to the ground. I never thought I'd see the day that all will be here will be a valley of water. It was a bit of go too, Johnny. This is what look to Bible shop. And I enjoyed our life we had here together in Belma Home. In all, between 30 to 40 townslands were affected, including the village of Ballinahoun. It is believed 75 families had to leave their homes behind them. A lot of families moved to Kildare. The sluice gates of the dam were closed on the 3rd of March, 1940. And 18 months later, the flooding of the valley was completed, leaving 6,500 acres of land underwater. As one man said, they were evicted whether they were willing or not. And anyone who didn't take the money, there was no sheriff needed. The dam was built and the water was the sheriff. I'd like to read you a poem who was written by Ned Fitzsimons, a local man who was aged 13 at the time of the flooding of the lakes. It's called Memories of an Old Man. As I wander back in memory of places lost in time, little did I think of all the changes that were coming down the line. I climbed the hill behind my home to view the scene so fair of green fields and of homesteads that are no longer there. The fields and all the hedgerows a lovely scene did make, now lost and gone forever beneath the Polifuca Lake. I walked along the country road from Burgage through Balti Boys, and as, as I was driving yoles and lambs, they made a lot of noise. I passed that place at Burgage where no one will ever see, where the waters of the Liffey mingled with the Avon Ree. I can still see that old mill bridge that was built below the town. It too has gone forever, like the town's land of Balnahoun. Last week, I went wandering around the roads of Ballylow to smell the heather-scented air as I did some years ago. As I walked along the roads, there was no scented breeze, for all the lovely heather hillsides are now covered now with trees. Sure, times are always changing, like figures in a fog, when people came from miles around to put turf on Murray's bog. In my youth, sure, we walked everywhere, morning, night, and noon, but now I see on television they're sending rockets to the moon. As I sit here by my fireside with my grandson on my knee, I cannot help but wonder what changes he will see.
you're an awful divil, so you are. Sure, what a way would you have me, Mary? <sighs> I still can't believe we're finally married. It is an awful divil I landed. You cheeky rape. <laughs> We've a great future here. This is our home forevermore. And I'm delighted to be sharing it with you. Sure, I love you, Mary. Even if you are the cheekiest ripping band in the home. Go on inside and put the fire on. I'll be in in a minute. Don't you worry, I'll have a right road and fire going for you. Bye, Johnny. McCree. Rest there forever in a watery grave. 